Hello YouTube, this is Frugal back with the second PMDG 737NGX flight series. This is a three-part video once again. Now you remember in the previous video that we actually flew London Gatwick to Amsterdam following PMDG's own tutorial flight number one. In this one, this three-part series, we're going to be looking at tutorial flight number two, heavily modified again because of the software that I'm using. How do I, how do I get to my seat here? How, do, how does one get to one's seat? Stand on that and jump over? I don't know. I'll tell you what. That's cheap. That works. Um, yeah, because of the software I'm using, it's going to be quite heavily modified. Now, in this first part, we're going to be setting up the aircraft again, just like in the first part of the previous video. The difference is, because I'm following tutorial number two from PMDG, there is a fairly extensive set of steps we're going to go through to calculate the actual fuel that you would need to fly a route. So, worth paying attention to if you have no idea how to calculate fuel for a trip. Once again, PMDG 737NGX flying the 737-800 with winglets. Before the questions come in, this is FSX, not prepared 3D. I am using Easy Dot cameras to actually fly around the cockpit and do all this sexy stuff like this. That's Easy Dot camera add-on, and I'm using FS to crew so that I have a co-pilot, which makes it a lot more realistic than manually flicking all the switches over that side of the cockpit on your own, which doesn't make any sense at all. So without further ado, let's fire up FS to crew, get the uh, first officer doing what he should do, and then I can keep telling you the good stuff. So I'm just going to lock this uh, FS to crew add-on right up here, mute my microphone so FS to crew doesn't get all concerned, and we will tell him to go about his business. Here we go. Let's start setting up. Okay. As always, stunning aircraft. If you haven't bought it and you like the heavies, well worth checking out. So my first officer now is just going through a pre-fight electrical startup. Once he's finished doing that, you'll see it change up here. Once he's finished doing that, I can go and set up the navigation computer. And the CDU, which is going to be the bulk of this video. Again, it's going to be a little bit, it maybe seems a little bit dull. It's not. If you're really into flying the 737NGX, you want to do things accurately. PMDG have built in a, fuel, a full fuel management simulation into this. So you can actually accurately figure out the fuel needed for a route from the, the CDU itself, which is kind of cool. I think it's cool. It makes for a much more realistic flight because the aircraft is the correct weight and you went through all the steps that a real pilot would have had to go through to do this himself. My goodness, come on Mr. First Officer. You notice I'm using a European crew because we're in Europe. Um, beforehand I think I was using an English or American crew. I mean English crew I'm sure actually. The American crew just grate on me a little bit. Um, so I'm just waiting for him to finish. You will hear things power up like the APU. You'll hear air conditioning come online in a second, which says that he is good to go. Come on now. Incidentally, let me show you the outside of the aircraft, which I can do now because I have all that set up. There it is. 737-800 with winglets. They're loading cargo right now. You can see the door open down there. Such a beautiful aircraft. Incredible level of detail. Oh, mind your head. You see all the cargo doors are open. That's where the luggage is going to go. We're not going to worry about that. We're going to be a little bit busy. Using just the standard livery. I do have all the liveries installed, but not messing with them for this. Okay, sounds like he's got the APU online. About damn time. No air stairs. I'm surprised. Let's get back in the cockpit and we'll go through all of our good stuff. So, heads down. Oh no, before we go any further, let's set up the nav system up here. Both these switches need to go to nav. There we are. We're going to need that in a second for synchronizing our current position. So here we are on the ident page. We're going to go to PosiNet. Right here. We are at Eham. So, I've got to be careful how I type this in because I don't want to conflict with the keys that I have set up for Easy Dot cameras. So we're at Eham, Amsterdam. Good to go right there. So we're going to go to the next page, pause ref. We're going to copy the GPS position, now everything's synchronized, go back to the previous page, load that in here, the aircraft now knows where it is, which is very, very awesome. Okay, let's go to the route page now, and we can start messing with this route. Now, we are going to fly to Innsbruck, which is L-O-W-I. Whoops, no, we're not. We're actually going to start at Amsterdam. Already the first mistake. 
All right, from there, and we're gonna fly to Innsbruck, up here. This is flight number Frugal 738. We are all good there. Let's go to departure arrivals now. And we're going to press one left for our departure. We're not using air traffic control. We're not using weather either. This is the PMDG tutorial flight, as I said. They simplify things so you can focus on just one thing, which in this case is going to be that horrendous landing at Innsbruck and the CDU setup that we're doing right now. So we're going to fly from runway 24, which is that one. And we are going to take off via the Lima Uniform November India 1 Sierra SID like so let's go back to our route page right now go to the next page for route page 2 and now we can set up the main route now you remember in the previous video we had to set up the vias and the twos there's actually a shortcut if you have a decent route that you got from route finder online or something like that you can just key in the vias it will connect the dots for you which is pretty damn awesome so our first via is gonna be oops wrong key UZ 738 up here and you'll see now, I don't actually enter the two, so I'm just going to continue entering the via. So, uniform zebra, or Zulu, 741 is the next one. And then the rest of them. So, uniform Lima 603. Obviously, I have the route from the tutorial that I'm reading. Uh, you could get this from a route planner online. 729 is next. Need to go to the next page because we ran out of space. Tango 104 is next. Uh, uniform Mike 867 is the next one. Zulu Zebra 106. I don't want to keep saying Zulu. Too, many, too much armor. Put that in there. And Mike 736 in there. Now, our last one, we actually do need to enter the two. So we're going to go from Mike 736 to Tango Uniform Lima Sierra India. And that's why I didn't want to press too many keys, because it changes my views. There. All good so far. Now we go back to departures and arrival screen. We're going to go for our arrival now. Because we're not using air traffic control, we know exactly what we're going to do. We're going to, that's the star that we need to connect to the Tulsi one, Tulsi uh, waypoint that we just put in. So we connect that one up. We are going to be landing via Lima Lima Zebra 26 approach, which is the scary one and transitioning via Rattenberg RTT all good there I'm out for the okay, walk around see ya. let's get to the legs button now just fix some of the stuff in here so uh, we have a max speed 220 restriction not a mandatory 220 requirement on this second point here so we're going to type that in as 220B slash put that in there and on the next page, over here, well, not next page, page five of nine, this soft requirement, we're going to make a hard requirement because of the altitude restrictions at Innsbruck. 9500 is a hard requirement in there. We're all done on the route. There was quite a lot to do, but the CDU and the PMDG 737 helps you do most of it yourself. So we can activate this route, activate, and execute. All good. All good and lovely. Let's go back to init ref now. Zero fuel, rate, zero fuel weight ZFW, we can enter that using the shortcut, so just click it once, it will figure it out for you, it will dump it in for us right there. Um, we're going to put in a reserve of 5,000 pounds of fuel. We'll change that later when we actually do the proper fuel calculations. We're going to have a derated takeoff, so cost index of 36, which is a higher thing than last time flying at flight level 390, which we'll put up here. And we're not using wind or weather. So, whoop, and I pressed the wrong key again. We'll put that up there as course and wind. Like so. And our transition altitude, our EHAM transition altitude is 3,000 feet. Which we will put in right about there. Again, execute that. Now, now this is telling us we're using reserve fuel. That's because we haven't calculated the actual fuel we're going to use. That's what we're going to be doing right now. I will show you two ways of doing it, according to what PMD tell us are the two ways of doing it. The two ways of doing it are, if we go to PROG, you can see it's a 457 nautical mile trip. We currently have 9,600 pounds of fuel on board. Landing at Innsbruck, we will have 3,200 pounds of fuel. Simple enough. So, 
um, the way of calculating, the very, very quick way of calculating it is actually to uh, add 2,200 pounds of fuel per 100 nautical miles. So that's 4.5 basically multiplied by 2,200, which would give us 9,900 pounds of fuel. Very, very simple. We then add around 5,500 pounds of fuel for reserve, giving us a grand total of 15,400 pounds of fuel. That's the lazy way of doing it. We're going to do the much more complicated way of doing it, which is where I am going to screw up horrendously. So looking at the fourth and fifth lines here, 457 nautical miles, ending with 3,200 pounds of fuel. Simple enough. If we subtract this from this, that's giving us 6,400 pounds of fuel for our base trip. What that's telling us is that flying from here direct or following these waypoints, including time in flaps and gear down and all that kind of stuff, is going to require 6,400 pounds of fuel. Now, we know that when we get to Innsbruck, we're going to be in the gear down and flaps down condition for five minutes longer than normal. That normally requires us to burn 132 pounds of fuel per minute more. So five multiplied by 132 gives us an extra 660 pounds of fuel that we need to add to the 6,400 pounds of fuel for the base trip. Simple enough. That gives us, oh, we should probably account for go around as well. The standard amount to add for a go around is 286 pounds of fuel. So 6,400 pounds of fuel plus 660 pounds of fuel to account for the extra time and flaps and gear down plus 286 pounds of fuel for the go around gives us a grand total of 7,346 pounds of fuel for the main flight. Legal requirement is we have to add 5% just to account for things like ATC vectoring, being assigned non-optimal altitudes. So that is an additional 367 pounds of fuel on top. We also need to account for taxi. Uh, the standard figures used on almost every flight, according to PMDG, I'm actually reading this now, are 30 minutes of APU time, 10 minutes taxi time, two engine burn as well. Uh, that in total is going to give us 390 pounds of taxi fuel. Again, a standard number. Okay, now, because we're flying the Lock DME approach, Lock DME East approach at Innsbruck, it's fairly horrendous. We will be breaking off from the normal route and circling around to land on runway uh, 8 rather than 26. And so we need to add, uh, let's say, a thousand pounds extra fuel to account for that circling approach. We also need to account, add, probably add in some extra. Uh, contingency extra fuel to account for more go arounds because it's such a horrendous landing procedure so we're gonna add up double up what we did before and say 573 pounds extra to account for the possibility of extra go arounds now there is also I'm back from the walk around everything thank you good. there's also a possibility that we'll be put in a hold because of weather I know we're not using weather but I'm trying to do this accurately holding uses 84 pounds of fuel per minute so let's assume 30 minutes of hold time 84 pounds of fuel 30 minutes hold time gives us 2,520 pounds of fuel for the hold. So our total fuel in total is trip 7,346 plus contingency 367 plus taxi 390 plus the extra which is our hold time our extra go around fuel is uh, 4,093 giving us a grand total of 12,196 pounds of fuel. The problem is if we're going to do this accurately we also need to have a diversion, an alternate. So let's go and do that. We are going to go right now back to the unit ref page. We are going to press the index button right here and we're going to go to alternate destination up here. Our alternate for this flight is Munich, which is. Hey, Captain, oh, may we start the Just one now? second. Yes. Great. You're welcome. Okay. Our alternate is going to be Munich, which is EDDM. We're going to put that up here. It's telling us direct to Munich is 358 miles. Well, that's wrong. That's direct from here. What we wanted to calculate is a alternate, you know, a diversion from Innsbruck to Munich. The way we do that, select that line, and then we change this from direct to missed approach just by clicking on this. That's a lot better. Okay, we need to increase the altitude here. The highest mountain in the area around Innsbruck is 12,500 feet. We need to clear that by at least 1,500 feet. So our altitude, if we're executing a miss and alter a diversion to the alternate, is going to be flight level 140, which we're going to put up here. Again, no weather. 360 slash zero on the weather. There. So far, so good. This is where it gets really quite scary. 
It says that the fuel requirement for this is going to be 2,100 pounds of fuel. So to divert from Innsbruck to Munich would require 2,100 pounds of fuel. If we go look at the prog page here, and I think it's now, oh no, prog page here. Fuel for the trip, the end, ending fuel we have in the tanks is 3,200 pounds of fuel in the tanks at the end of it. So 3,200 minus 2,200 gives us, let's say, 1,000 pounds of extra fuel. It's actually 900, but we'll round it up. 1,000 pounds of extra fuel. There is an, a 5% contingency requirement on that as well, which is an extra 50 pounds of fuel. Again, we need to assume that we put, be put in a hold. So that hold figure we had earlier, 30 minutes of hold, gives us 2,520 pounds of fuel. So our total alternate diversion route fuel is 1,000 pounds of fuel for the diversion, 50 pounds of fuel for the contingency, 2,520 pounds of fuel for the hold, giving us a grand total of 3,570 pounds of fuel. If we add that, 3,570 to our previous fuel calculation, 1,000, oh, sorry, 12,196, we have a grand total fuel requirement of 15,000. 766 pounds of fuel which we will round up to 15,800 pounds of fuel wow hopefully you followed all that i tried to annotate it on the video as well so it would be a little bit less confusing you might want to re-watch that if you're calculating it yourself all we need to do now is enter that in so on the captain cdu here we're going to go to menu fs actions fuel and again 15,800 pounds of fuel done and loaded Let's press init ref now. Get back to the perfect init page. We can start modifying things here. We know that our true reserves figure now is actually 3.6, 3,600 pounds of fuel. So we're going to enter that. 3.6. There. That's the actual reserves that we need for that diversion. Now, the issue we have here is if ever we see on the CDU here using reserve fuel, we are legally required to divert to Munich. We are cutting into the fuel that we need to actually fly to Munich. If we're on reserves, we need to be heading there, not Innsbruck. Bear that in mind. Okay, with all that done, at this point, if you were very, very professional, you'd be firing up a tool like Topcat and finding out your takeoff values and engine values and stuff. We're not doing that. I'm just following the tutorial for this. So let's go to the N1 limit page. We are going to have a derated takeoff, derated two here. We're going to assume an outside air temperature of 45, which will derate the engines further, as you recall from the last video. Let's go to the next page here. Now, we have a fairly complicated takeoff procedure from Amsterdam. Oh, those crazy Dutch. The procedure requires us to climb at V2 plus 20, reduce thrust to climb setting at 1500 feet, and then continue at V2 plus 20 until 3000 feet. After 3000, we can accelerate normally and retract our flaps. We can actually do that using the CDU and set up the aircraft to do all of this for us fairly easily. So we're gonna have 3000 field, 3,000 field. 3,000 is our acceleration height. Let me go to the next page. Why isn't this not working? Oh, I'm sorry. Take off. Next page. Acceleration height here is 1,500. We don't need to change the reduction altitude. That is normal. Our engine out acceleration height is 1,000 feet. One, whoops. 1,000 feet is our engine out acceleration height. We'll put that in right there. All runways in FSX have a zero slope, so we don't need to put in anything crazy there. Again, we are not using weather, 360 slash zero for the wind and the weather. So far, so good. Let's go back to the previous page. Lost the setup, right? We're gonna be using flaps one for this takeoff, right in here. Our center of gravity is calculated for us, which is fabulous. Here we are, and now I have calculated our V speeds. V1 is 144, VR is 145, V2 is 147. So far, so good. Now let's go on to the desk button. Where is that? Right here. Desk forecast page, right here. And flight level, 040, which is the transition altitude here at Amsterdam if we need to come back. So we'll put that in right there. And we are pretty much done. So now we can fly through, fly through run through the rest of the setup of this aircraft. Uh, where am I in my notes? Okay, so we've done all that. We've set up the CDU. We can do a little master lights test. I actually don't bother with this stuff. I don't have failures turned on. So it's not a huge deal, but for the sake of argument, let's do it right now. Come on. There we go, we're in a test. All the warning lights should be lit up everywhere, which they are. So we know that works. I'm gonna turn that off now. What's next? 
We're going to set up the EFIS control panel. So we want this on barometric right over here. We are going to be using the VORs and have those displayed on the uh, DUs down here. So I'm just going to turn those on VOR, VOR1, VOR2. Need to set up our minimums. Now, to save me panning around the cockpit, you can just click on these displays and pop them open, which I'm going to do. My minimum is going to be 900 and I've forgotten how many feet. Let's say 980 feet because of the runway being less than uh, sea level. So start spinning this around here. Come on now. 980 feet. Clicky, clicky, clicky. I am ready for the I checklist. I don't care that you're ready for the checklist. I'm very busy. It's going to take a while. Oh my goodness. Wish there was a way of just typing that in. You know, I could even put in a thousand feet. It doesn't really matter. I think it's actually 983. That's what we're going to leave it as right there. I will close this window. What else do I need to set up up here? Uh, just the minimums. I'm good. Okay. Flight director is on. Copilot already did that. Not going to worry about that too much. Oxygen test. Just scroll down here. Click on the test button. Make sure we see that, which we did. Noseable steering switch guard is closed. We are good there. Uh, initial data and navigation steps, we just did that. Uh, standby altimeter has already been set by our trusty first officer. Altimeter is 1013 because we're not using real weather or anything like that. We set up the standby RMIs. Speed brake, because I accidentally pressed the speed brake button, didn't I? Let's go and fix that. Thank you. Let's set up our radios before we go any further. We're going to need them. Lots to do in this flight. Okay, nav one. We want nav one tuned to Schiphol. So that would be 108.4. There. Like so. Nav two, we're going to set to the Pampas VOR, which is 117.8. Like so. Nav 1 standby, we're going to set to Amsterdam runway 27 again just in case something goes horribly wrong and we need to return. That is 111.55. There's the 55. I kind of hate working with these knobs. Nav 2 standby, we're going to set to Amsterdam runway 18 center again just in case we have to return. And we don't know if we do have to return which runway they're going to stick us on. That would be 109.5. Like so, that's standby, everything is good. Um, I'm missing, I want the transponder actually set to 332, again, whoops, there we go, transponder set to 332, and as in the previous flight, we are going to set our, sorry, not transponder, ADF, what am I saying, we're going to set our transponder up to 2200, just like uh, in the previous flight to signify IFR. We're good, I'm going to set up the HGS now, the runway we are going to is 11,329 feet long, so, 11329, hit that runway button, it has a zero slope, sorry, zero altitude, so we're all good there. Enter, we are all set. Okay, now we can finish doing all the setup and working with our first officer, who will very much enjoy our company, I'm sure. Okay, turn the mic on. Pre flight checklist. Oxygen. Checked. Instruments transfer and Checked. display switches. Window heat. Checked. Pressurization mode selector. Auto. Flight instruments. Heading 003. Altimeters 1013. Hello, Captain. The passenger boarding is complete. And when you're ready, I have the load seat for you. Awkward. Thank you. <coughs> Heading 003. Altimeters 1013. Three parking brake. Have a safe flight. Set. Engine start levers. Idle. Oh, checked. Checked. Pre-flight checklist complete. All right, so now we can move on to the start procedure on all those good checklists. Change over my notes here. I'm actually referring to the actual checklist here and the FS to crew flows. So, before start procedure. Okay, so we can't actually do before start procedure because the doors have not been closed. But what I can do 
is set up the uh, autopilot and all that good stuff, which is what I'm going to do. What is up with my views here? I'm bouncing around all over the place. Okay, again, I'm going to pop open this view because I need it. And we can m run through setting up all this good stuff here. So let's go to our uh, init ref, N1 limit, takeoff. Okay, speed is going to be 147. That would be V2. Like so. I think he's actually waiting for my before start procedure. In fact, you know what? I probably should. I've actually missed a step. I have screwed up. I should go back. And we probably should do. Yeah, we should do the departure briefing. Let me get that out of the way while I'm continuing with this stuff right now. So, back up onto the briefing panel here. Play briefing. Are you ready for the departure okay. brief? I'm ready for the brief. Okay. We have no mail issues today. I will be the pilot flying. This will be a standard takeoff using noise abatement departure procedure 1. The departure will be an ATC assigned SID. We will use flaps 5 for takeoff. Runway condition is dry. As for anti ice, it's not required. Engine bleeds will be on. Okay, for the takeoff safety brief. Up to 100 knots for any malfunction, I'll call reject, confirm auto brakes are operating, and if not operating, I will apply max manual braking and maximetric reverse thrust. Come to a full stop on the runway, and after full stop on the runway, we make a decision on further action. From 100 knots to V1, I will only reject for three reasons. Engine failure, engine fire, or takeoff configuration warning horn. Add or above the one continue into the air, and the only actions below 400 are for you to silence the bells and confirm failures. Above 400, I'll call for failure action drills as required, and you will perform memory items. At 800 feet AFA, I will call for alt hold and retract flaps on schedule. 1,500 feet, I will call for the checklist. If above max landing weight, we will make a decision to perform an overweight landing as the situation requires. For wheel well, engine wing fire, I will turn the aircraft in such a way the flames will be downwind side and we will evac via the upwind side. For cargo fire, ensure the emergency services do not open the cargo doors until evac is complete. Any questions? No questions. Departure brief complete. Okay, now we're back on track. We've done the departure brief. Cabin crew are going mental. Now we can do the before start procedure. So let's get that underway. And then I'm back on track as to where I should be. also request that you review the safety instruction in your seat. Before start procedure. I'm showing a door right here. Of course. It looks like one of the doors is still open. Okay, so while he was doing all that, I actually set up all the MCP, uh, all the uh, autopilot stuff right here. So I've set up um, my course is 106, his course is 225. That's tracking your VORs and making sure that everything is on track once we get into the air. Lots of double checks right now on this flight. Uh, I set up the initial speed, 147. Our heading from the takeoff reference page is 239. Just go to takeoff reference page, go to the second page, you'll see runway heading is 239. And I have set up the trim, which is 5.03 according to the weight that we have. That was calculated for us by the aircraft. So at this point now, we are pretty much just waiting for the cabin crew to get their act together. Um, and we'll be good to go. I haven't land loaded passengers and stuff. That was already done prior to starting this flight. I can arm LNAV and VNAV now, and this is a good double check. If I've set everything up on the flight computer properly, both will turn green, like so. So that's all set up and we're good to go. We're now just waiting for the cabin crew to finish their procedure. They'll come into the cockpit and tell us they're good. And then we can do before start procedure, I hope. I haven't missed anything. Trim is set for takeoff. Yep, we're all good. We're actually way ahead. I expected us to be behind at this point. So I'm kind of surprised at that. Let's look at this route here. Pretty scary route, right? So we're actually taking off that way and then turning straight away. I could change the range on this. Let me see if I can do that while we're waiting for the cabin crew to figure out what they're supposed to be doing. There we go. What a hideous departure that is. And then it's pretty much a straight line all the way into Austria before we land at Innsbruck. Come on, cabin crew. I've set up my HGS already. Incidentally, with the HGS, you can clear this for taxi. If you go down to the HGS control here, uh, this button right here, it's very hard to see from this distance. Let me zoom in. Whoops. Let me grab the mouse and zoom in properly. Bit of a graphical glitch there. Okay, the far left button is clear. So if you wanted to turn that off and not be confused for the taxi, just go down to the HGS display here, click that far left button, 
you can clear the display, which is kind of cool. I'm actually going to leave that cleared, and I'm actually going to get rid of it. We'll pop it down next in the next video. What is this cabin crew doing? I heard them finish their announcements. Exit closed. Here we go. Lots of alarm bells. They're removing the air stairs that we already saw aren't really there, which is very strange. Come on, girly. Just double check everything here. 225 on his side, 6,000 is the altitude, heading 239, speed 147, my side 106. We are on barometric up here. We have the standby indicators, both onto VOR1 and VOR2. We are in map mode. Our range is pretty good on the map. Okay, hey, Captain. Cabin is ready At to go. At last. God, take your time, won't you? Thank you. If you need anything, just let me know. Before start procedure. Check. So he's going to run through his stuff now that I already did. It's a shame with FS to crew that you can't do things a little out of sequence. Like, he could have done most of this stuff already. I'm sure there's probably a legal reason why you can't do before start procedure while passengers are still getting on board. Um, to the 737 pilots that I watched this, I apologize if that's the case. Alright, he's ready for the checklist. Before start checklist. Flight deck door. Checked. Fuel. Uh, I'm not going to read the quantity. Checked. Checked. Passenger signs. Checked. Windows. Checked. MCP. Uh, V2-147. V2-147. Heading 239. Altitude 6000. Takeoff speeds. V1-144. VR-145. V2-147. CDU preflight. Completed. Radar and Edelrand. Checked. Strength. Taxi and takeoff briefing. Completed. Anti collision light. Checked. Before start checklist complete. Okay, so with that done, we can start the pushback now. Let's just warn the cabin crew to arm slides. Cabin crew, arm slides. And we will go speak to the people on the ground. Top it to ground. Go ahead. We are ready for pushback and the main engine start. Okay, all doors and hatches are closed. Pit has been inserted. Uh, please release brakes. Brakes released. Roger that. Pushing back and uh, you are clear to start our engine. Start sequence is two then one. Check. Start engine two. Starting number two. Waiting for that to hit 20, 25%, then we'll pop the starter lever up. Now we wait for him to tell us that the ignition is disengaged and we're good, starter's disengaged and we're good, and then we'll go engine one. Bit of a bug here in that our taxi position, our, yeah, our gate position is pretty bad, so uh, we're actually going to be pushed back over the grass. Which is kind of odd. There goes the engine. Love that sound. Starter cut Start out. engine one. Starting number one. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, welcome on board. This is your purpose speaking. Please direct your attention to the cabin crew for the safety information. First, there is an instruction card in your seat pocket that illustrates the safety equipment on board of this aircraft. 
Regulations require compliance with this information as well as all crew instructions, lighted information signs and posters placards. Fasten your seat belt by inserting the metal tip into the buckle. Tighten the seat belt by pulling on the belt. To release your seat belt, lift the metal flap on the buckle. It is our policy that you keep your seat belt fastened at all times when you're seated. Doors are clearly marked with exit signs and instructions. Each door is equipped with an ex escape slide. Locate the nearest exit to you and note that the nearest exit may be behind you. In an emergency, lights will Im illuminate the aisle. The cabin is pressurized. If there is a loss of cabin pressure, a panel will open and the oxygen masks will... Okay, push is complete, set brakes. In such case, remain seated with your seat brakes set. fastened and pull the mask. Thank you, Captain. And uh, the turbine pin has been removed. See you on the left side. The engine will be flowing you are clear to the to disconnect and get a hand signal. Okay, everything's fine down here. Wish you a nice flight. With the mask, Flaps one. place the elastic band around you and tighten by pulling on the ends. Secure your own mask before assisting other passengers. Your life jacket is located under your seats. Tighten the straps and once out, take off flaps. Set. Pull on the tabs to inflate your jacket. Before taxi checklist, please don't do this Wait. before you leave the aircraft. If the jacket fails to inflate, use tubes near the neck. Your jacket. I am ready for the checklist. Before taxi automatically checklist, illuminates generators on with water. This is a non-smoking flight, a smoking Pro in the cabin on or in one of the laboratories. Checked. Cabin lights will be off. Take off. Isolation valves. Checked. Located. Engine stop switches. Continuous. Thank you for your attention. Recall. Checked. Auto brake. RTO. Engine start levers. Idle the tent. Flight controls. Checked. Ground equipment. Cleared. Checked. Before taxi checklist complete. Clear on the left. Clear on the right. And we are good to go. In the second part of this video, obviously it will be taxi and takeoff, and then we'll be messing with the uh, CDU down there and seeing all the stuff that the CDU can do and how to program it and change your routes and all that good stuff based on air traffic control but for now that's the end of this video thanks for watching as always my name is frugal please leave a like if you enjoyed this video i apologize for the mistakes i'm not going to record it again it took forever um, and whatever happens please also subscribe cheers guys thanks for watching